Merry Christmas. We welcome you to worship on this as we celebrate. We're, we're celebrating Christmas on the 26th on Sunday uh, instead of on, on Saturday just because it was so close uh, together and, and it gives, uh, gives us a chance to um, worship on, on this Sunday. Both the Lord is uh, brought to us in a manger as well as Christ is risen from the dead as we do every Sunday. Well, let us uh, then begin our, our worship by singing our first Christmas hymn. Let us call upon our God in the name of the Father. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the name of the Son, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In the name of the Holy Spirit, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. We also come before God confessing our sins. If we say we have no sin, we do deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Take a moment to uh, silently reflect on your sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are not the creatures you intended us to be. We have fled from your light and truth. Although we sing about joy to the world because our world has come, we still desire to be our own lords and masters. 
we deserve your punishment. For Jesus' sake, show us mercy so that we may walk in the light of your love. Amen. And now receive the absolution. To all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. As a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our entrance hymn. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as a Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We also turn to our Lutheran Confessions. We have been looking at the Augsburg Confession, but because it's Christmas Day, I decided to turn to the chief articles of faith found in, in the Lutheran Confessions, and especially the article called Concerning the Son of God. Our churches teach that the Word, that is, the Son of God, assumed the human nature in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So there are two natures, the divine, and the human, inseparably joined in one person. There is one Christ, true God and true man, who was born of the Virgin Mary, truly suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried. He did this to reconcile the Father to us and to be a sacrifice, not only for original guilt, but also for all actual sins of mankind. From John 1, verse 29. We also confess our, our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and very appropriate on Christmas Day to, to say the second uh, 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 article in this creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hear from God's Word. Our first scripture reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son? And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, and Merry Christmas. We have been waiting for this day to come. We've been counting down the weeks of Advent, and we have those candles that we light each week. Some people at home have Advent calendars that they count down each day until Christmas. 
And some children are so excited for it to happen that they put those paper chains and they tear off a link each day, counting down. One of the things that makes it easier is knowing what day it is, how many days you have left until it comes. The difference for the Old Testament people, they were waiting, waiting for the Messiah, the Savior, and they didn't know when he would come. They were waiting and hoping and praying and trusting. And that's what God teaches us, that we can trust in him, that if he has us waiting for something, it's something good that he wants for us. And that's what Christmas is, is his gift to the world, worth the wait, worth all of it, because it's God coming to earth, Emmanuel, God with us. And so as we have waited, we have looked forward to the day, and that day is here. Jesus is born.
The text for the sermon on this Christmas morning is from John chapter 1, verse 1, where we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is uh, our text. It was a number of years ago that a story appeared about a man who picked up a beautiful rock from a North Carolina stream and he used it as his cabin doorstop. Yet, uh, or years later, a geologist who was hiking in the area stopped at the cabin and noticed the doorstop. And he noticed it and, and recognized it immediately as, the, uh, as a huge lump of gold. In fact, it proved to be one of the largest gold nuggets ever found east of the Rockies. Imagine having a huge nugget of gold at your doorstep, not knowing or recognizing it. Well, in the same way, many people do not recognize the glory and the value and the worth of Jesus Christ. Looking at this world, the world is happy to see Jesus as a baby, and I kind of like this, <laughs> this, uh, um, these uh, figures of Joseph and Mary and even Jesus with mass on, uh, kind of very contemporary, I suppose. But many of, uh, many people, you know, see it just as something cute. There's a baby in a manger, not willing to to really see him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that he is. How the world really prefers to view this event. They welcome him as a son of David, but not as the son of God. The world does not mind celebrating the birth of a baby, but they do not want to hear about him being Lord of Lords. They sing about his nativity, but they brazenly reject his authority. They adore him as an infant, but they do not pay homage to him as the God-man he is. They can tolerate the trappings of Christmas, a manger, a shepherd, or shepherds, wise men, Joseph and Mary, but they cannot bear the advent of God in human flesh. Consequently, the world ignores the, the core of all Christian truth. And instead of honoring Jesus at Christmas, they are actually mocking him. The enemy, Satan, must love the world's Christmas celebration. They pay lip service to it. Well, who is this baby in a manger? He is the incarnation of of God. Christmas is not about the Savior's infancy. It is about his deity. The humble birth of Jesus was never intended to conceal the reality of God being born in the world. But the wor modern world's version of Christmas does just that. The, the, the story and as cute as, as it is of a baby lying in a manger, somehow conceals the fact that God was being born in the world. And so consequently, for the greater part of humanity, Christmas has no legitimate meaning at all. Well, if you think about it, none of us could ever fathom what it means for God to be born in a manger that is without the working of the Holy Spirit. So how do we explain the Almighty stooping to become a tiny infant? It was, of course, the greatest event the world has ever known or ever will know. Our minds cannot begin to understand what was involved in God becoming man. We will never comprehend why he who was infinitely rich would become so poor. Why he would assume a human nature and enter into the world he knew, he knew would reject him and even crucify him. 
nor can anyone explain how God could become a baby. Yet he did. Without forsaking his divine nature or diminishing his deity in any sense, he was born into a world as a tiny infant. People often will, will ask if he ever cried or if he needed the normal care and feeding that one would give to other babies. Of course he did. He was fully human with all of the needs and emotions that are common to every human. Yet he was also fully God, all wise, all powerful. How can both things be true? I honestly do not know. But the Bible clearly teaches that it is so. So who is this Jesus? For nearly 2,000 years, debate has been raging about who Jesus really is. The cults and the skeptics have offered various explanations. They say, well, he's one of the many gods or he's a created being, or a high angel, or a good teacher, or a prophet, and so on and so on. The common thread to all of those theories is that they make Jesus less than God. But the Bible speaks for itself. John's Gospel begins with a clear statement uh, that Jesus is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made man. It was made. The biblical evidence is overwhelming that this child in the manger was the incarnation of God. Jesus said, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So who is this child? He is God. We can see that clearly now. The scriptures are clear even though the world seems to uh, content to keep him as just a seasonal decoration. We confess that the baby in the manger is God Almighty, the child who came to be a sacrifice for our sins, we, those sins that we could not remove, sins that are no more because Christ's blood shed on, is, is, was shed on the cross for us. This is an important part of our celebration today as we wish everyone a very blessed and Merry Christmas. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, you made yourself known to us through your son, Jesus. Now may we make your son's name known to all the world. Fill our mouths with your true and holy word, and may your words take on flesh and bone in our actions toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church. Lord Jesus, you did not come to call the self-righteous, but sinners, and we are sinners. Don't let us overlook the discipline in the way you want us to follow. Keep us mindful how much we need you all of the time and help us show others that they need you too for the renewal of life that leads to the abundant life that only you can give. May we daily teach others as forgiven sinners, daily forgiving one another too and encouraging one another with lives that are radiant with love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call for our, or we pray for our call process.
God would desire a new pastor to be among us, to lead and walk with us. Direct us as we wait. Bless all who serve in the congregation, especially those who have the responsibility to lead us in the call process. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. O God, the ruler of all, since you desire that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, let your blessing rest on our civic leaders and all whom you have placed in positions of authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives, godly and respectable in every way, enabled thus to pray and work unhindered by anger or quarreling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who protect us. Gracious Lord, be with all who serve our country by keeping us safe. We pray for protection on all police officers, firemen, those in the military and those in homeland defense, and those in the medical fields. Continue to bless them and their families as they serve us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. O God of compassion and concern, receive, this, receive and strengthen with your great upholding power those for whom we hold up in prayer in their weakness and need. We pray for those who are healing from cancer. Paul Anderson, George Mate, Geraldine Meyerman, Sharon Hunter, Marty Williams, Emily Franks, Linda Mer Rozier. We pray for healing from other sicknesses. George Pickett, Mike Albright, Lumney Park, Ed McNeil, Andrea Green, Marjorie Violos, Lois Chick, John Scott, Denise McQuaid, Danielle Seagal, Kathy Williams, Wendy West, John Burtonshaw, Eunice Serling, Ron Albers, Govern, govern from, from Heart Surgery, Paco and Vince waiting for kidneys, Lori Parrish, Karen Hart, who is recovering from surgery, and pray for Bob Green for eye surgery. We pray for he, healing from injury for Valerie Van, that surgery may be delayed due to abnormal heart EKG. We pray for Abby Geiser. We pray for Jan Kinsel and Natasha. We pray for solace for Pastor Brady and his family, Melissa's and family, the Rodriguez family, the family of Gene Anderson and his wife Virginia, for Denise for, from loss of a father, for the Lloyd family. Look upon them with your mercy and surround them with your love and send them men and women skilled in using your good gifts of medicine. And by your great concern for them, move us as well to be among the instruments you use to offer comfort where we have the opportunity. Through him who care, whose care has reached even into our lives, our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together our Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you on this Christmas day. The Lord be with you always and give you his peace. Amen. We sing our closing Christmas song.
Now I ask that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God and have a very blessed Christmas.